and uh, if you would got a hold of your Bibles please stand I just want to read from verse number three I'm going to abbreviate because of time the Bible says verse number one says it pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom and the Bible says that over these three presidents of whom Daniel was first someone say he was first that the prince might give an account unto them and the king should have no damage then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and the princes because an excellent spirit was in him an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to set him over the whole ram verse number four then tells us that there became an uncomfortable feeling because of his elevation verse number seven says and all the presidents they're now trying to find a way to move Daniel out of the way it says the governors the prince the counselors captains they all consulted together and look at this word to establish a royal statue to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days save of the O King he shall be cast into the den of lions verse number 10 and I will conclude because of time and when Daniel knew that there was a writing was signed he went into his house, his window being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. And the Bible says these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God then the text goes on to say because of that they decide to use this against him Daniel is put in the lion's den verse 22 and I will conclude then verse 21 then Daniel uh, said unto the king O king live forever my God had sent his angel and had shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before, as before him innocent was found in me and also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. My God, verse 22, had sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me. I want to talk to you, thank you Minister Nikki, I want to talk to you on the subject, how to tame a lion. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, or you have to be a bit louder than that, say neighbor, how to tame a lion. That's what I want to speak to you tonight about, how to tame a lion. Father, I need you right now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable. Give us a word that will change our life. Let burdens be removed. Yokes be destroyed. In the name of Yeshua the Christ, Son of the living God. Someone say amen. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor, how to tame a lion. I'm into what we call biblical pneumology. And when I talk about biblical numerology, I'm talking about the understanding of numbers. There are significance in the numbers that we have. One is known as the number of God. Two is the number of witness. Three is the number of the Godhead, Father, and completeness, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
four is the number of the earth it's the number of uh, the earth and what is in the earth five is the number of grace six is the number of man it's also the number of dominion seven is the number of perfection and completion eight is the number of new beginnings nine is the number of fruitfulness but it can also mean judgment ten is the number of commandments uh, and ten eleven is the number of chaos confusion and 12 is the number of apostolic government order 12 we are in this year 2012 it's the year of apostolic order apostolic government 12 is also known as the number of covenant the the 12 tribes of israel symbolic symbolizing the covenant of god everybody say 12 everybody say 12 so the number 12 also is the number that brings us to a place of apostolic government 12 tribes of Israel 12 uh, disciples uh, 12 uh, is powerful in all of its number but the, the reason why you have apostolic government 12 is because 12 is to put something in place the government of power is to establish something. So ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you that 12 is a combination of the word establishment. It means to put orders and systems in place. I wanna to prophesy to you quickly that this is the year that God is putting some things in place that no matter what the devil is trying to do because next year is the number 11 also means rebellion. And a spirit of rebellion will come up in the earth. But if you've got it together this year, it doesn't matter what the devil is trying to do next year. When God puts it in place, no devil is going to shift what heaven has decreed over your life. Someone shout amen. So the word establishment means to put orders and systems in place. God is getting ready to do something because next year, 12, as I said, it's the number of rebellion, but it's also the number of God's blessing. You're going to experience blessings, but at the same time, if you have not got things in place this year, if things ain't established in the realms of the spirit this year, then the devil of the spirit of rebellion will come to fight against what God has established. But the word established means it's in order, it's set up. And when something's put in place, no devil can shift it. I've come to make the announcement, this is your year. Before, oh Kashamaha, I feel it already. Before this month ends, you got to start making sure that what you want God to do for you is in place. Because based upon what you release in this year, is gonna set you up for next year. I don't hear nobody talking to me. Pull your neighbor like you pull him out the seat. Say, neighbor, establish something. That means whatever you want God to do, you got to start decreeing it. Because I prophesy every demonic power that tried to stop you for years, this is the season that God's getting ready to shut that power down. Somebody better scream, yes. Someone holler establishment. So ladies, sit down, it's too early. I'm just getting my to introduction. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, that means this is the year that whatever your vision is, put it in place. Whatever you want God to do, do it this year. It's no coincidence, Bishop, that this is your 25th year. 25, two and five is seven. Seven is the number of completion and perfection. 25 is the sign of your jubilee. Everything that was taken away, God's getting ready to shift it back. It sounds like you don't want nothing. Let me find the right people. Everything that the enemy took from you, everything he stole, starting from tonight, whoa, whoa, shut. 
I, I want to find my people just quickly. Starting from tonight, whatever the devil said you couldn't have, whatever he took back from you over the many years, this is what God says. I'm going to turn the clock back and restore the years of the palmer worm, canker worm, grasshopper, caterpillar. I feel like preaching. Everything that the enemy took, God's going to give it back. Holler to your neighbor, say he's going to give it back. That means, that means prepare. Prepare enlarging your tent. Enlarging your coast. Because something great is about to happen. I don't hear you like I want to hear you. I said something great's about to happen. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Depending on how you shout tonight, there is a thing called the power of agreement. If you release it tonight, something's going to shift in place and activate when you release it out of your mouth. Be seated. Now, because this is the year of establishment, because this is the year that things have to be positioned, and the word establishment means to put orders and systems in place, it means to set a thing up, it means to position it to a place that it cannot be shifted. It means I'm putting down a legacy that cannot be tampered with. Are you with me on this? Everybody say establishment. Now, I want to just give you a couple of things. I won't be long. On the law of establishment, I want to put a few things to you and then I'm going to preach in a minute. I just want to just get you to get a hold of this. The law of establishment is in Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 15. This is what the law of establishment is. It says, one witness, this is verse 15 of Deuteronomy 19, verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two, at the mouth of two witnesses, or the mouth of three witnesses shall a matter be established. Do you understand that? That means tonight, I don't need a whole lot of you to agree with me. All I need to do, and you need to check who's around you, is to find two or three. Because the Bible says, once you got two or three people who is a witness, who's privy to the information, a witness is someone who saw the situation, who's privy. They have, they're an eyewitness or they've heard something. Now, let me say this right now. That's why if you're sitting next to someone who don't believe what you believe, who don't see what you see, who don't hear what you hear, they can't be your witness. Let me try this again. Let me say it again. If you are sitting next to somebody that don't believe what you believe, don't see what you see, don't feel what you feel, they can't be your witness. How do I know I have a witness? When I hear something that the preacher says, something stirs not just in me, but the person next to me, because we're a witness that what the Lord says shall come to pass. Oh God, I feel like somebody's about to get a miracle over here. Let me, let me try it again. Pull your neighbor, say neighbor. Can I get a witness? Now, how do you know when you have a witness? The Bible says a witness is prodigated by this, by the mouth of two or three which means you cannot be a witness if your mouth is quiet. 
let me try up here who your neighbor say neighbor you cannot be my witness <laughs> 